If this video is helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So next I am going to do is to use the react font input for this. So I am going to search for react font input 2 and I am going to click on this npm. Next I am going to do is to copy this section, this comment and to run this comment here. So now you can see that react font input has been installed. You can see that in the package.json. Next, in the documentation, you can see that we have to use this phone input into our project. So, I'm going to comment this input and I'm going to use the phone input as like this way. So, I have imported that from React phone input too. Next, I'm going to give the value props. Then, next, I'm going to do is to define a new state. That is phone. Then I am going to give the empty string. After that, I am going to do is I am going to give phone in this value. Next, I am going to use the on change. And in the on change, I am going to give as set to phone. And here I am going to pass the phone state. After that, I am going to do is I am going to copy this style from here and to paste it in this login component as like this way here i am going to give as placeholder phone number so now you can see that this is the phone input here you can see that we can use the props such as container style input style button style etc so as of now i am going to use the input style as a prop and into this input style i am going to give the height of this phone input as like this way then next i'm going to use the props that is container style and in the container style i'm going to give as margin top okay then i'm going to give the margin top as like this way next i'm going to give the width of this phone input in this input style so now you can see that this is the structure of this phone input so we can select the country from this list Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this input field and paste it here. After that, I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this margin top. Then I'm going to give the placeholder that is one time password. So now you can see that here is the input field. Next, I'm going to do is to search for Firebase. I'm going to click on this link. Next, I'm going to click on this Get Started button. After that, I'm going to click on this Add Project button. Then, next, I'm going to give the name of the project as Swiggy iPhone Clone. And I'm going to click on Continue. Here, I'm going to disable this analytics. I'm going to click on Create Project. Now, you can see that a new project has been created. After that, I am going to click on this continue button. So we will be redirected to this console. In the console, you can see that I am going to click on this web icon. So here we have to give the name of the app. So I am going to give the name of the app as Swiggy Clone itself. Next, I am going to click on this register app button. Here you can see that as we are using this npm, I am going to use this command for installing Firebase. So I'm going to run this command here as like this way. So now you can see that Firebase has been installed into our project. You can see that Firebase in the package.json. Next I'm going to do is. We have to use this code into our project so i'm going to copy and paste this code so for that i'm going to create a new folder called firebase in this folder firebase i'm going to create a new file called setup.tsx and in this file i'm going to paste that code as like this way next i'm going to do is to remove these comments as like this 
So here you can see that there is a Firebase config which contains API key, auth domain, and project ID. So we don't want to bring any changes. So I'm going to minimize that. Next, you can see that they have imported initialize app. So the thing that we have to do is we have to import a function from the Firebase slash auth. So I'm going to import the function called get auth as like this way. Then after that, I'm going to do is to define a variable that is auth and I'm going to assign this get auth to it. Next, I'm going to pass this app as the argument to this get auth. So we have to pass this app to this functions that we are importing for authentication or Firebase database. So I have exported that variable for using it in other files. Next, I'm going to do is to click on this continue to console button. So we will be redirected to console. In the sidebar, you can see that there is a build button. So here in the drop down, you can see the authentication. So when I click the authentication, you can see this get started button. So when I click this get started button, you can see that we will be redirected to sign in method. Here you can see there are three providers. So I'm going to click on this phone and I'm going to enable by clicking this save button. You can see that phone is enabled. Next I'm going to do is to define a new function that is send OTP, which is an arrow function. And I'm going to do is, I'm going to define a new variable that is recapture. And I'm going to use a function called recapture verifier from the Firebase as like this way. I'm going to pass auth as the first argument. And then I'm going to pass a string called recapture. So we have to use this string as an ID of a div for showing the capture. So here below this input, I'm going to use a div and I'm going to pass it as an ID as like this way. Then as a third argument, we have to pass the empty object. So here I have given the class name to margin top as like this way. Then next I have passed the empty object as the third argument. So next I'm going to do is to define a other variable that is confirmation. And I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the function called a sign with the phone number to it. And as a first argument, I'm going to give as auth. And as a second argument, I'm going to give the phone state. And as a third argument, I'm going to give the recapture that we have defined. Next, I'm going to give a single away to this sign in with the phone number and try. Then I'm going to give as catch. And in the catch, I'm going to do is to give as console.error and I'm going to pass the error as like this way. Then after that, I'm going to do is to call this send OTP function in this on click of this button as like this way. Okay. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this button as send OTP. So now you can see the send OTP button in this login section. Next, I'm going to give a condition here that is if phone state is true, then only we have to show that input of OTP. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function that is verify OTP, which is an arrow function. So I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this confirmations to a state. So for that, I'm going to define a new state that is user. Then next I'm going to do is to copy and paste this user, set user here and to pass this confirmation to this set user. Okay, then next I'm going to do is I'm going to give the type of this as any. After that, I'm going to give here as user dot confirm. So I'm going to call this confirm function here. And next we have to pass the OTP to this confirm function as an argument. So for that, I'm going to define the state that is OTP. 
and I'm going to give as empty string as like this way. So next I'm going to give on change to this input field and here I'm going to give as set OTP and I'm going to pass the e dot target dot value by taking the event. Okay, next I'm going to do is to pass this OTP to this confirm as an argument. After that, I'm going to give the async await, then try catch. Inside this catch, I'm going to give as console.error and I'm going to pass the error. Next to this try, I'm going to give the user.confirm. After that, I'm going to do is to call this verify OTP function. So for that, first of all, I'm going to cut this input field and to paste it below this button. Next, I'm going to copy and paste this button again. And here in this button, I'm going to call the verify OTP function. Next, I'm going to change the name of the button as verify OTP. Then here, after that, I'm going to change this font to user. So now you can see that. Next, I'm going to give here as a plus symbol along with the font and I'm going to give here as font also. Next, I'm going to define a variable that is data and I'm going to log that data in the console. So, here I'm going to give a margin top also. Okay, so now you can see that I'm going to give condition for this button also for verify OTP. That is, if OTP is true, then only we have to show that verify OTP button. Okay, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate. So for that, I'm going to use the use navigate hook. So here I'm going to give the condition that is data dot user dot phone number is true. Then we have to navigate it to the main component. So next I'm going to use the React Toastify. So I'm going to search for React Toastify and I'm going to click on this NPM. After that, I'm going to copy this command from here. Then next, I'm going to run that command in the new terminal. So now you can see that React Toastify has been installed. You can see that in the package.json as like this way. Next, in the documentation, you can see that we have to use toast container, toast, and this style. So I'm going to copy and paste this in the login component as like this way. After that, I'm going to do is to give the toast container here. So first of all, I'm going to cut this whole div and to paste it here as like this way. Above that, I'm going to give the toast container. And I'm going to use the auto close props. I'm giving as 3000. Next, I'm going to copy and paste the same condition here as like this way. And here I'm going to give as toast dot success. Inside this, I'm going to give the message that is logged in successfully. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to use the set timeout. And in the set timeout, I'm going to give the navigation. That's like this way. So now you can see that I'm going to take the login pop up, and here I'm going to select the country first. After that, I'm going to give my phone number. After giving the phone number, I'm going to click on this send OTP button. Now you can see the capture. So I'm going to click on empty section as like this way for showing I am not a robot. So here I'm going to give the OTP. And I'm going to click on the verify OTP button. So now you can see the notification that is logged in successfully and we have redirected to this main page as like this way. Next, I'm going to do is to search for the rapid restaurant API and I'm going to click on this link. So here we have to log in. So I'm going to log in by using my Google account. 
so I have logged in. Next, I am going to click on this restaurant API. Then after that, I am going to click on this pricing. So here you can see that there is a basic option for subscription. So I am going to click on that subscribe button again. You can see that subscription created successfully. Next, I am going to click on endpoints. The next on this full screen option and here I am going to select the language that is JavaScript and I am going to click on fetch. Then after that I am going to do is to click on this search as like this way. Next I am going to copy this code from here. After that I am going to take the main component and here I am going to do is to define a new function that is get restaurants which is an arrow function and I am going to paste that code as like this way. Next, I am going to give the async here. And here I am going to change this response.test to response.json. Okay, so this is the result. So I am going to take the console. After that, I am going to call this get restaurants function in the use effect hook as like this way. So now you can see that here is the response. So the response contains a result. So I am going to do is first of all, I am going to change this into data and I am going to log the data dot results in the console. So now you can see that in the console, here is the results. So the results contains different details. So from that, I am going to click on this data. So at that time, you can see that data of different restaurants so i'm going to click on one of the restaurants so at that time you can see that different details like name is there and also you can see the other details like photo the photo contains the images so you can see that there are different images so we can use that in our project okay If this video is helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel.